Hi there, David here from criticaltrading.com. Hope you are keeping well. In my last video, I shared a market structure trading strategy. I've gone through all of its rules and explained its trading logic. The strategy is based on market structure, so it doesn't use any indicators, and it dynamically adjusts its entry and stop loss to the actual market volatility. If you haven't seen that video, you can find the link to it in the description. In this video, I will follow up on this concept. I'm going to take this strategy and apply it on intraday time frame of e mini Nasdaq, which will be useful for you if you're looking for some day trading inspiration. I will explain how to adjust this strategy to intraday timeframes and what exits to use when you decide to trade it manually intraday. Then I'm going to apply it on daily timeframes like I did in the previous video, but this time I'm going to share a very powerful filter that I used for this strategy, which lowered its maximum drawdown by 42%. And lastly, I'll share the strategies, back test results and comment on those. Additionally, for those interested, I'm publicly sharing this strategy's code for free on my website. The code is in AmiBroker AFL format and you can download it by clicking the link in the description below. So let's start by looking at how to trade this strategy on intraday timeframes. I've got a strategies code applied on one minute chart of e mini Nasdaq, which is ticker symbol NQ. Just a quick recap of this strategy. It's a fully systematic strategy that trades market structure and therefore doesn't use any indicators such as moving averages, RSI, and so on. The core of this strategy is to identify the market structure first, and this is done by looking at the highest high and lowest low over a certain time period. On this particular chart, the highest high value is plotted as turquoise line. The reason why highest high is used in this strategy is to determine the structure of the market. The basic premise is that if the highest high keeps steadily rising, like on this chart, market is strong enough which makes it suitable for long positions, i.e. to buy, and speculate that the market will carry on in its existing momentum. On this chart, we can see that the highest high is broken here, for instance. This means that the market structure is suitable for potential long entries. When the highest high is broken, strategy calculates the buy level, plotted in yellow below the price here. This buy level isn't an arbitrary number, but is based on the actual market's volatility using indicator called ATR. This is extremely important. The strategy adapts to the actual market volatility and adjusts its buy level and stop loss accordingly. I explained this in detail in the previous video. The actual long entries are made when the market makes breakout of the highs high and then retraces back to the yellow buy level like it did here. Strategy has a simple but effective filter to filter out potential trade setups when the market goes sideways. This is done by a time limit that's applied to the validity of the yellow buy level. If the market makes a new high but start trading sideways afterwards for longer than the time limit, then the buy level is not valid. This helps to filter out trades in choppy sideways markets. Again, all explained in detail in the previous video. Now, let's have a look at some specifics of this strategy when applied on intraday timeframes. As I said, the chart we're looking at here is e-mini Nasdaq futures contract, but this strategy can be obviously applied on any market, including Forex. The first thing that needs adjusting is the time period of highs high or lows low. In the previous video, I worked with period of three months because I worked with daily timeframes. But when it comes to intraday timeframes, such period obviously doesn't make much sense. It needs uh, changing to the daily high and daily low. On this particular day, for instance, the daily high and low is plotted in the form of blue lines. At the beginning of each trading session, these values are reset. Now, let's look at one particular trade setup here. This is a short signal. Market breaks the daily low here, then makes a retracement and comes back to the predefined sell level here. The question is though, where exactly to exit the position? When I was working on this strategy, I primarily focused on the entry rule side and not so much on the exits. For that reason, I opted for a very simple exit strategy where the trades are closed when the close of the candlestick is lower than previous two closes. This would mean that this particular short trade would have been closed somewhere around here. If I traded this systematic strategy that we are looking at here manually, then I would be working with an exit strategy that would exit the trade somewhere at this point. 
if I wanted to implement an exit strategy like this, then I would start by placing the profit target at the level of the previous daily low, so at the level of the current blue line. As we can see on the chart, market hit that level here. The second logical exit approach is to try catching bigger moves. As we can see on the chart, market kept going lower and lower for much longer after the first exit in point A. An interesting exit strategy that would aim to catch bigger moves would be to look at the daily low again. If the daily low is broken, and then the market is not able to break through it again, the position would be closed. If, on the other hand, the daily low keeps being broken over and over, the position remains open. In this particular example, the daily low got broken here, but the market didn't manage to break through it for prolonged time. This would therefore be an exit signal. Again, if the market managed to break the daily low again within the specified uh, period of time, position remains open. Now, which one of these exits is better? I do not believe that one particular exit strategy is necessarily better than the other. What I do believe, though, is that in manual trading, you need to figure out which entry and exit suit you personally and that your entry and exit rules are aligned in their logic. When it comes to systematic trading, it's a bit different as you don't necessarily watch the markets real time. And so the psychological pressure of holding an open position is alleviated to a great degree. But when it comes to manual trading, I personally like to hold my positions for as short time as possible. For example, with my uh, manual trading strategy based on volume profile that I teach my students, I aim to catch short, sudden imbalances in supply and demand. For that reason, I generally want to hold my positions for a couple of candlesticks on average. Going back to this strategy, I would choose exit A, but again, this comes down to a personal preference. Now, let's go back to daily timeframes. I applied this strategy on a randomly selected stock ticker. Over here, I'm going to show you a one particular filtering method that I use to lower the drawdowns of my systematic strategies. We're looking at the beginning of 2020. I don't think that I have to remind anyone that markets were massively affected by what was happening in the world at that time. As a result, the volatility went up massively and the equity markets dropped significantly, as seen on this chart. My aim when developing my strategies is to obviously avoid being in the market when events like these take place. Despite these events can't be predicted, there's one particular indicator that can help to signal an increase in volatility very early. This index is called VIX. It's an index that measures the volatility of S&P 500. Its calculation is rather complex, but to put simply, it measures the implied volatility of S&P 500 options. If the index rises, then the implied volatility of S&P 500 rises and vice versa. What's important though is that increases in VIX correlate very highly with panic in stock markets. Therefore, when I develop my systematic strategies for the stock markets, I want to ensure that they stop trading when the VIX gets to an extreme. If I zoom out, we can see that it oscillates in a certain range and occasionally it breaks the range and gets to extreme values. As I said, these extreme values are usually associated with panic in the markets during major fundamental events like beginning of 2020 at this point. So for the purposes of this strategy, I applied a filter that looks at the actual VIX reading and compares it to its previous readings over past 100 days. If the current reading is in the top 25% of values, then the strategy doesn't trade as the current VIX reading is too high, implying increased volatility. So if I visualize this filter in the form of this green bar on the screen, we can see that as the VIX keeps um, within its range, the filter is mostly green, meaning that it's okay to trade. But as soon as the wicks spikes due to major fundamentals at the beginning of 2020, the filter quickly turns the strategy off. Well, this means in practice that no new trades are open until the VIX settles and the volatility returns to normal. This simple filter that adapts to the current stock market volatility reduced the maximum drawdown of this strategy by 42%. If you trade stock markets on daily timeframes, then I highly recommend that you implement some sort of a filter like this. And finally, let's have a quick look at the results as well. These results belong to the daily time frame variant of this strategy applied to S&P 500 stocks. Trading commissions are included and the tested period is from January 2000 to start of December 2020. The version that these results belong to uses the original simple exit that I presented in the previous video. And so this is excluding any more sophisticated exit strategy.
Due to this, the winning percentage is quite high, 65%, with the average loss being higher than average profit. This makes uh, perfect sense as the version tested is a mean reversion strategy. Trading commissions are included, which is very important. The average annual return is at 17%. However, the associated exposure is only 33%. What this means in practice that this strategy is invested in the market for just 33% of time, and yet it generates an average annual return of 17%. The annual return figure should definitely not be looked at in isolation. What you should be looking at is the return adjusted for the exposure. So if we take the 17% and adjust it for the 33% exposure, we get over 50% return. And this is in the real world very solid. And now a final look at the strategy's equity curve that's shown in yellow as well as its uh, drawdown plotted in red, the maximum drawdown of 22%. I hope that you've taken a lot away from this video. If you like to see more of these videos then consider subscribing to my channel and turn the notifications on so that you get notified when I make a new upload. Thanks for watching, David, Critical Trading, signing out.